Um, we have known each other for quite some time now. Yeah, like 2007. Yeah. Yeah, we went to grad school together. <laughs> we graduated. And I think the thing that I was reflecting on this this morning of like, how do I introduce Nahal and how special and um, what kind of service she um, provides to her community. And I think we come from a very similar background in that um, service has often come with the burden of burnout and with the burden of um, being pulled away from our true selves because we are offering our work for other people in a way that's maybe not fully aligned. And I yeah. love that this is your path now, that your path now is about helping people really realize what their sacred path is. Um, a, because we can be a lot more efficient with our time when that happens. Um, but also because I think that with so many of my clients, my friends, the Tao is so connected, that sacred path, that Tao is so connected to the flip side of wounding um, mm -hmm. and really exploring your wounds on such a deep and um, vulnerable and um, just conscious way, I think, makes it so that your Tao becomes a lot more um, understood. So I'm actually going to be in the student role here uh, because I have no idea how eclipses relate to sacred paths. So yeah, I think let's start with um, just naming when this this next eclipse is going to be and, and sort of unpacking it from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next eclipse is coming up April 30th. And that's a, a solar yeah. eclipse, right? And then eclipses always come in pairs. I don't know how many of you know a lot about uh, the outer workings of what's going on outside of our Earth, but eclipses come in pairs with a two-week window. It's always the full moon and the new moon right next to each other. And so the new moon eclipse that's going to be coming after that is May 15th or 16th, depending on where you are in the world. Awesome. And basically in that time, you know, I don't know, I, like today is the full moon. It's a full moon. It's a beautiful full moon. And um, I just want to actually take a moment and honor what's going on right now because it's been a really powerful week um, and I'm just feeling it in my mm. body. So it's the full moon, it's Ramadan, it's Passover, it's Baisakhi, it's Easter, it's all these like renewal holidays. Um, and there's so much going on in the world. There's violence uh, like at the staggering level. Um, and so I'm holding all of this in my space. I'm recognizing I'm on unceded Nisanon land. People don't even much know about the Nisanon tribe um, because they were um, almost completely murdered during the gold rush. I live in wow. California and they're still fighting for federal recognition. And this is, the, this is where I'm locating myself geopolitically, mm -hmm. um, but also present to atrocities that are happening across the world, especially in Palestine. Mm -hmm. right now. Um, so holding all of that, what is our place in the world is like such a potent question for me because it's so easy to go numb, I think, with all that's happening. And um, there is a sacred activation occurring within us if we can root into our bodies mm -hmm. and receive the wisdom. Mm -hmm. there. And so for me, an eclipse window is such a sacred time to root into your body. And I want to honor in many indigenous traditions, it's not done to go look at the eclipses. It's like, it's not a time to like go and go, oh, wow, so cool. It's not for that. It's for going deeply inward and listening. Mm -hmm. um, so FYI, like public service announcement, don't post pictures of the eclipses on your Instagram account because it's actually harmful to indigenous people who follow that mm -hmm. practice. Um, that said, an eclipse is a, it's like the power of a full moon, like we're in the full moon now, it's powerful. And then the power of a full moon at an eclipse is like exponentially multiplied. Mm -hmm. It's so intense. And so we have our, our full and new moon every month and the eclipses are twice a year, these eclipse okay. windows. And these form the nodes of the whole year. So if you're like, oh yeah, like for me, I have my Cancer and North Node, that tells me about the eclipses the year I was mm -hmm. born. They're this huge node as we move through um, the energetic sphere of the year of the earth. And I feel like, you know, I, I get so like 
um, wrapped up in anti-capitalism sometimes. Same. You know, I feel like one of the one of the things that really um, is so difficult for me about the medical industry, you know, as a re- as another retired acupuncturist, just yeah. like you, is how we had to commodify ourselves. Mm-hmm. How and and the just I I could go on for a long time about this, but I I think it occurs for a lot of people in their jobs. I'm going to put in these hours. I'm going to meet these deadlines. There's a commodification of our physical being, mm-hmm. of our energy, of our intention, and. Um, it takes us away from what our core gift really yeah. is. So the, the eclipses are a powerful time to allow in the awareness, oh, this is what I'm about. And you'll notice they're also like, they can really end things that are not aligned for you anymore. Mm. Just at, like, that'll just naturally mm-hmm. occur. Like you don't really need to set intentions for that because it's it can feel scary. Mm. Um, but that might actually happen that people will step away from relationships that aren't safe for them anymore or, or from jobs. It's a big relationship transition mm-hmm. moment. Can it also be a step into what is more aligned? So much. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's like um, a, there's like an opening that's supercharged for your awareness about what's true for you. Mm-hmm. And I, I talk to so many of my clients and patients who are like, well, I don't know if I should do this or this or this. And Either way, I'm not sure if what what I want is really what I want or if I'm just catering to the, like, desire for approval Mm -hmm. from the people around me, whether it's work or partners or friends. And the eclipse is such a time of crystallization that you can really access what you're truly about. Yeah. So let me see if I'm understanding this correctly. Um, So then I, I actually didn't know that the eclipses come in pairs. Um, and so do you consider those like the bookend marks of, of what you, what you're calling the portal of like, we're stepping into the beginning of the portal, um, at the end of the Mm -hmm. month and then sort of stepping Mm -hmm. out of it towards the middle of next month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. And it's such a potent time, you know, you can do deep dream work there, like really record your dreams during those two weeks. They'll give you big information. Um, there, there are a lot of ways to go within, and um, one of the things that I'm really passionate about right now that I think is like it's the best time of mm-hmm. year to notice is what your core gift mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Now, core gift is a it's a it's basically an indigenous wisdom. It's from uh, continents all over the glo- globe. Um, so Bon Pusome, um in Burkina Faso teaches a lot about this. Okay. Um, there it also aligns with Buddhist wisdom and with wisdom of um, North America uh, of tribes in the tundra, but it's, it's like when I'm looking for a, like a truth, I always look for what the harmony of truths mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Um, so capitalism came through and it wanted to commodify our gifts, but your gift is something that you give freely, mm-hmm. gently, lovingly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not looking for reciprocation. It just fulfills you to give it. It's right on the surface. You don't have to go deep into your trauma to find it. Um, and when you're aligned with it, it reveals your path to you. Like that's the, that's like the fastest, easiest way to know your divine Mm -hmm. path is to recognize your core gift and witness how it evolves that you get to give it in Mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. So for me, the most potent way to find your, soul path is to know your core gift. And for me, the most potent time to find your core gift is during an eclipse Mm. window. Fascinating. Um, That's making me feel like uh, I have this really beautiful meditation that I do with uh, a lot of my, my clients. Um, And it's about going in and uncovering what your purpose and what your Tao is. And I might have to start planning these meditations to happen on in that that portal window that you're talking of Uh, it sounds like the perfect time it's such a powerful Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. yeah it's such a powerful time so you've circled around this a couple of times and I just want to explicitly name it um because I think that what we're talking about is these conditions and these stories and these narratives that we all take on um you know like I think that we are all born beautiful and whole and in touch with actually what our gift is. 
And yes. in our need to survive our families, our cultures, our communities, um, this capitalistic world that um, we all live in, um, we get pulled away from that that core gift, that sacred path along the way. And I've personally found that the path back into rooting into that sacred gift has been a subtractive process of releasing these stories and narratives and conditions that, you know, and not releasing them in sort of like a fuck you sort of way, um, but releasing with gratitude and releasing with an honoring mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and saying, thank you so much for helping me survive. I really actually needed that, whatever it is, whether it's the attachment pattern or the um, need to people please or the need to be a fighter. You know, you can release all of those stories and narratives with sacredness and honoring. Um, Absolutely. And I'd love for you to just – like I want to just hear your take on on this story around conditions and um, that path back to the true self. Ooh, I love it so much. Thank you for that invitation. Mm. You know, I've come to recognize that um, even those parts of my personality that were dysfunctional are um, they were there to help me. They helped me manage and survive through, um, you know, the, the events that life threw at me. And to just throw them out is kind of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Like, yes, now my people-pleasing tendency has caused me more harm mm -hmm. than good, certainly. And for me, it's not so much a process of release as integration. Mm -hmm. So I really work to befriend that part of myself, to witness what does it need, what did it need, what is it here to yes. teach me? What is it teaching me today? Right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It, like, what is it teaching me today as I'm like challenged around my in-laws? Or what is it teaching me today as I'm um, encountering this this thing with my sister? Like there, I don't, I, you know, it would be like cutting off a part of me. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want a lobotomy. I want to know who I am and I want to receive all of the gifts that I, you know, received in growing through the various traumas of my life mm -hmm. and I don't think you can do that by just walking away and honestly like I, I don't know how you would divorce yourself from it. Yeah. I think we you know maybe we suppress it and then it kind of burbles <laughs> up and get you know gets restifled. Um, I think that when we suppress but, those parts um, they actually mutate. Um, tell me more. Um, I mean I think of it mostly in terms of like emotions. So, I mean, in one of the things that I am so grateful I learned through Chinese medicine is that no emotion is negative. Um, and yes. so it gives you full permission to actually step into anger, sadness, grief, you know, these emotions that are typically not very well received in our Western culture. Um, and, you know, I think you know, sort of to circle back to what you were sharing at the very beginning is um, there's so much violence in the world right now. And I really think that that comes from us not being able to actually express and integrate um, the emotion of anger or the emotion of grief or, or fear. Um, and it mutates and turns into something that it is not. Um, whether that mm, gets, I'm 100%. yeah, whether that gets expressed outwardly in terms of violence, or whether that gets expressed inwardly in terms of depression, um, this yeah. is this is where mutations happen. Yeah, I've never thought of it as a mutation, and that's such a poetic way of understanding the way that you know the soul can express itself through mm. harm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, on the flip side of it is alchemization, right? And I think of like yeah. alchemization, integration almost as being like sort of sister words. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you're talking about is when we are able to step into and integrate um, these parts of ourselves that actually helped us survive, like there's the potential for um, in, like alchemization to happen versus a mutation. Right. Absolutely. 
So if we were to think about how the eclipses serve us in that way, you know, they can help us if we have these mutations where we're causing harm to ourselves or others, Mm -hmm. they can help us recognize and diffuse that Mm -hmm. pattern by integrating, by choosing who we are and to receive the gift of the wisdom of that emotion instead of suppressing it and causing it to mutate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, You said such an important word there, choice. Um, choosing who you are. Can you say any more about that? I, I yeah, like, I got hooked I, into that and I was like, mm, <laughs> you gotta say more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're all, we all get like handed a, a like deck of cards or a hand of cards in terms of how, and like all of our strengths and our weaknesses and our challenges and our traumas and then how we integrate them is our choice Mm -hmm. right and so our emotions are such a guide you know our soul is literally talking to us in the language of emotion Mm -hmm. right so like if my soul is giving me depression like i want to say this each emotion is giving us the energy we need to solve the problem our soul is presenting us right so anger for example such a sacred emotion it gives us lots of energy to change the injustice that we see right? Anger is such an energizing emotion. And oh man, do we have it suppressed in Mm -hmm. our society that we have all these like helplessness problems. Anyway, I digress. Um, But I want to talk about depression because I think a lot of people are are reckoning with it. And depression is a really powerful emotion. What energy does it give you? I mean, it sucks energy. Totally drains us. It drains us. It's like If you imagine like you're this giant steam liner ship and you're traveling on the ocean and you need to turn around, what do you have to do? Oh my God. The energy and the momentum needed to to (sighs) flip that ship around is immense. Right. right? You have to slow down Mm -hmm. so much to turn around. And for me, when I hear depression, you know, and it's like no judgment here. It just, it tells me that the soul is saying, hey, this is the wrong way. Mm. This is just the wrong direction. Like, there's nothing wrong with you, Mm. but let's find the right direction. But the inertia of your life is moving you along and people are expecting you to show up at the meeting on Wednesday. And like, what does it take to slow down so much that you can reconfigure your life around your truth? Oh my God. Fuck Nahal. That's so (laughs) beautiful. Mm -hmm. I would... I would also take that a step further and and ask people, like, how does that feel in your body, you know, and where does that show up and where are the physical sensations that are coming through with your experience of depression? Um, because I think that there's so much that can be learned in the inquiry of slowing down and listening to, like, a, your emotions, but also what your body is trying to share with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That That's like a radical anti-capitalist practice right it there. It is, yeah. It you is. Know? Capitalism is like, let's plant seeds and harvest fruit. Let's plant seeds and like grow fruit. Plant seeds, grow fruit. Like let's keep building and growing and building and growing. And that's how we create our economy and industry. And I feel like I should define my terms here. When I say capitalism, I'm talking about a system that values profit over people's mm-hmm. needs. Mm-hmm. That's specifically what I mean. I'm not railing against commerce. Commerce can be yeah. sacred. Yeah. But capitalism that puts profit over human life, over human needs, and it teaches us that we're only as good as what we yeah. produce and that we're worthless if we're not doing yeah. something. And it says, go, go, go. And that's how you can measure your value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The practice of slowing down is such an affront to that message that we've been yeah, given. Absolutely. And I think that something else to name here, because um, I think for for both of us, our audiences are spiritual entrepreneurs. And one of the biggest struggles that I've been hearing in my community is this lack of, of a cyclical understanding when it comes to businesses. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and I love that you named that as, you know, and, and, you know, capitalism is about 
profit over people. Um, and mm-hmm. so we're not railing on commerce because there is a way to do commerce ethically. There is a way to do commerce yes. in a way that is truly aligned with your sacred path. There's a way to do commerce in which everyone's needs are are put at the forefront and and being asked to be met. Um, and and so I think that we have a tendency to just umbrella, capitalism and think of that as just being anytime there's an exchange of money and that's not necessarily true there's there's absolutely a sacred exchange um when somebody makes an investment towards something that they need Mm -hmm. yeah something they're calling in Mm. yeah and you know what i love about this is that ultimately when there's sacred commerce when there's a sacred investment it is you know Money, the money is great. The money is an energy that's get that's exchanged, but it signifies that there's a relationship of trust. Mm. Like within my business, no one's going to give me money who doesn't trust yeah. me. And I don't give my money to people I don't trust. What I think is a, a real powerful mark of commerce versus capitalism is that when we are in commerce, we recognize that every monetary exchange comes because a relationship has been mm-hmm. built. Mm hmm. And that relationship is the true um, indicator Mm -hmm. of, I don't know, impact or um, like the the purposefulness of a of a business. Like I I feel like the relationship is the sacred Mm -hmm. piece, and capitalism forgets the relationship. You know, just like it just wants more. It's like let's file more people through here. Yeah, both as a seller and as a buyer. Um, what I'm finding that on my own path in understanding the energetics of money is, um, you know, I always knew that like as a practitioner, I wanted to receive money in a very clear and intentional way, um, in a way that again, as you so beautifully stated is about a sacred Mm -hmm. relationship and trust and actually love. Like I love every single one of my clients. Um, And on the flip side of it, what I'm also learning is that because I have received money in this way that is full of love and respect, that's also how I want to spend my money. Mm-hmm. And so it has changed how like um, the clothes companies that I will purchase from, it's changed um, my yes. eating habits You know, I only eat meat at home when I know that the animal came from a um, a healthy life, Um, and I don't eat meat when I eat outside in restaurants anymore. Um, And it's changed like the furniture that I buy. You know, and so Mm. if you think about yourself as being. Like almost like I think about myself almost as like a filter um, of like money being circulated in the world in a way that's now going to be clean and in line with my values. Um, Yes. And I think that there's that absolutely ties into that sacred that idea of the sacred path is when you feel aligned with yourself and who you are um, and your intentions are clear then action comes from an aligned place and that can come in the form of receiving money and also in the form of spending money absolutely oh I love how you brought soul alignment into how we use commerce mm. <laughs> yeah add, add on I to felt it. that way add for on a to long it. time <laughs> <laughs> well you know I've I've been on this trip for a long time about like, okay, if I'm voting for my dollars, how am I voting for the world that I want to see, right? Like, am I supporting black and indigenous businesses? Am I buying food I can be proud of? Like if I have the financial privilege to buy organic and I can support a movement towards agriculture that's more sustainable, like I think it's my responsibility to Mm -hmm. do that. You know, all of these little things, I, I think it's such a big deal. And, um, there's a there there's an integrity like I don't want how do I want to call it like a sense of um, like a sacred sense of pride when you are acting in line with your values even with mm-hmm. money 
that I think is really powerful here. You know, I, back when I had no confidence, when I was like 20, 23, 26, I don't know, <laughs> whatever age that was, I got this bookmark and it was like, if the secret to confidence is simple, just do things you're proud of. Hmm. And I was like, oh man, I must not really be proud of myself. Like, and at this point I, I cultivate a practice of like every night I'm, I'm writing down the things that I accomplished in the day that I can be proud of, even if it's brushing my teeth, if it was a bad day, <laughs> like, you know, but like now, I, now confidence is a sacred practice for me, but I, I love using money as a, as a practice of doing things I'm mm. proud of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. Where, where I'm putting my money that I can always be proud of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I don't buy it from Amazon, yeah. <laughs> for example, yeah. you know, not that I'm like, I'm not, I'm not as perfect about it as I wish I were. Like sometimes I'll use my mom's freaking Amazon prime account. If I need something tomorrow, mm -hmm. it's true. I do that, but like, I won't give them my, but mind. perfectionism isn't the goal here. Um, right. I think that, you know, when when we talk about some of these things that that feel so precious, mm -hmm. um, I think that there's, and again, I think that this is a capitalistic way of looking at it, is like there's this way of wanting to do it perfect, um, of, of doing it pure, yeah. of, of doing it in this like very, yeah. very clarified way. Um, right. And... You know, I I don't know that I've ever made a switch in a complete 180 degrees in just like a split second. It's always been totally in stretching my nervous system. Um, it's yeah. always been in, okay, I'm going to take this step and see if that feels safe. Oh, look, I didn't die. I'm going to take this next mm -hmm. step and see if that feels safe. And then you turn around, you know, six months from now and you're like, oh, wow, my – spending habits have changed completely or the way that I hold space for people has changed completely. Um, and it's done through these, these seemingly imperceptible little baby steps that, that add up over time. So I don't think perfectionism is, is necessarily the goal. You're totally right. And I love how you underscore that. Um, it's true. And I, and I love how you use embodiment as a, as a framework for making the slow shifts because, uh, you know, change, true lasting change is always going to be mm -hmm. slow. Like that's, that's the pace of organic change. That's the pace of the earth. That's not the pace of capitalism. Mm -hmm. And we get looped into these, like things need to be fast mm -hmm. thinking, but you know, I was meditating a few months ago and I was like, man, every time I start to want to like get deeper into my business self, this, part of me that wants to hustle pops up and then my body it says no my nervous system like shuts down it's like no do not hustle like this is not your way forward mm -hmm. this is not what the earth needs from you mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. i'm like okay well what what would be the anti-hustle like what is the thing that's needed of me like how do i show up in life if like my nervous system was trained to hustle mm -hmm. like that's how i <laughs> so i was born and raised mm -hmm. and the answer came so powerfully and deeply to me. It was like the question, like what's the anti-hustle is how embodied can you be? Like, can you push yourself to the maximum of embodiment mm -hmm. as you move through this earth, mm -hmm. as you move through mm -hmm. the world, as you engage in your sacred commerce? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was like a door opened to like the next three octaves of like self-discovery for me was such a like sacred moment. I'm like, all right, I've got a lot of work to yeah. do, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's always something to come back yeah. to. And I think that fast pace, that hustle um, mentality is designed to override your own wisdom. It's designed to override yes. um, your yes. connection to your sacred path, because it's like, if yes. we can push your nervous system into a space of fight and you're being forced to make decisions on the fly very quickly and there's yes. a urgency to it, there's a scarcity to it. Um, yes. Then again, in the same way that you take little steps forward and you move forward in um, 
and you're making these changes in in minute ways in the same minute ways you can be stepping away from your sacred path um and you can you can you know turn around and look at your life six months from now and be like where did and where did I go off path here? Where did I jump the tracks? Bingo. And it's really hard to trace that back um, oftentimes because, you know, I look back on my life and in those times where I felt really disconnected and really like, oh, I did all the things that society told me that I should do, you know? Like I went to the college, I went to grad school, I opened up practice, I got mm-hmm. married, I, you know, mm-hmm. like – pretty much almost down to the white picket fence like (laughs) um (laughs) and there was no like like lightning bolt moment of like oh I'm doing something out of alignment it was in these Mm -hmm. these steps um these like steps that you take one at a time that yeah um I think I got pulled off of my own path. And so I think that this, the the way back to your path is is a similar path. Um, and a lot of Absolutely. it is around slowing down and, and checking in and and being like, okay, soul, like what's our path here? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I want to honor so many pieces of what you just said. And, you know, I, I recognize that you – time between eclipses, those two weeks, is a time to go slow. Mm. It's a time, like, if you can clear your schedule as much as possible within reason, mm. right? Give yourself space there. Give yourself space to listen. Give yourself space to create or dance or sleep. Mm. You know, whatever's going to honor mm-hmm. you right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that slowing down is such a radical practice, and it's so needed. Mm. And... In that time, so much can come through. But I also want to honor that, as you know, as you call it out, like hustle culture, urgency, perfectionism, like all of these pieces are not just tropes of capitalism, but tropes of the imperial white supremacist heteropatriarchy, as Bell Hooks would have called it. Mm -hmm. And when we slow down, we have a chance to realign not only with ourselves, but with like the rhythm of the earth and the rhythm of a true healing cultural dynamic that's possible. Mm-hmm. 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 I think just to add on to that, um, I look at systems, whether it is the minutia of a cellular system or our bodies mm-hmm. or our cultures, our, our collective. And I see how we are constantly in this like dynamic push pull of seeking homeostasis. Um, you know, like a cell that has too much salt within its, its membrane is going to draw in water to create that homeostasis. Mm -hmm. And the body is going to shiver when it's cold to find that optimal body temperature. And I look at our, like, if you expand, like, what's happening in the world right now, um, it's, it's this craving and need to get back into homeostasis and we just don't know how to do it um, because we've only known how to do it through means of yang, through means of pushing, through means of hustle, through means of overriding. And I think that when you I, – I love when you speak about like, okay, so what is the earth asking of me right now? Yes. Um, what you are speaking to is how do we root back into the intentionality of finding homeostasis? And homeostasis does not mean homogeneity. Like homeostasis honors differences and diversity, um, yes. but it is about sustainability and making sure that everybody's, again, you know, the needs of the beings on this earth are being met versus productivity yes. um, being the primary focus, which is a very, very um, mutated young way of looking at the world. And I think that we've been trying to find our way back to homeostasis 
through a very young and active um, sort of basis. And we're pulling ourselves actually further into imbalance when we try to do very yin things like finding your sacred path and self-care and, um, you know, aligning with who you are by making a to-do list out of it. Um, that's right. a, like, that's putting a yin thing and then overlaying a yang, um, sort of intentionality <laughs> yeah. around it. Um, so I think, you know, just to highlight what you were saying earlier of like, okay, so what is earth needing of me right now? And can we honor that? Can we be in, um, sacred relationship with that and not try to over systemize, uh, over systematize, um, these things that we're trying to dismantle. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm, I'm so glad you said that. It's really true. You know, our, our culture has learned how to take sound bites, yes. right? And then like <laughs> implement them, but they're never, they're never like multidimensional and we're multidimensional mm-hmm. beings. And how, how do we integrate them? That's why um, with the eclipses, I really like to give like, frameworks Mm -hmm. and archetypes Mm -hmm. like ways to live into and and there is a very specific framework that's been um, honed over time for discovering what your core gift is in a really gentle Mm trauma-informed way and it is it's like I love doing it during the eclipses because it's like really honoring the earth's timeline but of course, it's a process of personal discovery that can't be rushed, mm-hmm. you know, and it can't be, um, it's, it's, it's a living thing. It's in the moment, right? It has to be given space to bloom. And um, it's sacred in that way. And when you have that core gift and you've like come to your own awareness of what your soul is about doing here, what fulfills you, that's when you can choose those little baby steps of embodiment. Oh, what if I bring that to my partner? Oh, what if I bring that to my parenting? Oh, what if I bring that to my colleague? Oh, what if I bring that to my meeting? Little baby steps. And that is when I believe a lot of the main root causes of depression, anxiety, and happiness and loneliness, they they lose some of their rooting because you are aligning with your truth. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a broader picture that starts to take place and it's slow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not like you're gonna be struck by lightning and then suddenly, you know, every <laughs> you're like in a technicolor Disney movie or something like I no, wish it worked like that. <laughs> part of me that wishes i don't know maybe that's what the metaverse is trying to solve (laughs) i don't know (laughs) but um you know i i don't want people thinking that they're coming into the eclipse going to fix themselves because people are whole Yeah. yeah right it you you are whole and it is only a journey of wholeness from wholeness to a new expression of wholeness Mm -hmm. right so you are complete and perfectly imperfect the way you exist Mm. and the eclipse is also a window that invites us to kind of like it's like a, a portal of courage where we can reach out and make advances like energetic advances mm-hmm. in like within the etheric realm honestly mm-hmm. to make our dreams come true like this is a realm of free will and i believe like if there's anything to release it's it's the illusions that have held us from using our free will in a way that's aligned for yeah. us yeah absolutely and i think that that circles back to what you were saying earlier about choice um yeah the way you're speaking about eclipses and the energetics of the eclipses is it's almost like here's a peek into like how sovereign of a being you are. Yeah. And 
can you embrace that sovereignty um, in a time when nature is showing you how sovereign you are? Um, mm-hmm. Such an interesting movement of like the sun and the moon overlapping. Like I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's like, like this is the embodiment of, of nature showing us how interconnected and how closely related yin and yang are. Um, we have a tendency to think about like day and night as being separate things and the moon occupies one aspect and the sun occupies the other aspect. And it's like, no, actually like they are in communion with each other all the time. And so in that communion, um, is like the symbolism of that, um, yin and yang colliding I think of that as being like oh fuck that's that's how sovereign of a being I am all these places that I feel like I have no choice actually I do have choice and how can I honor that choice mm-hmm. um yeah oh I'm learning so much from you Niho. so powerful it's always the same <laughs> I love being with you <laughs> oh my goodness um, I'm curious if you have, have, if you've done the research or, or, or know the knowledge around this of like that, that window of time, I think is so interesting. Cause it's like, it's, it's about two weeks. You said where the portals open. Yeah. It's two weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's the time between a full moon and okay. a new moon. And so I feel like there's something significant with the time of that. And I can't quite place my finger on it other than it just feels right. Mm -hmm. Like it feels like just enough time to like actually lean into that space of like, like really peeking behind the veil. Mm -hmm. Um, and and getting whatever downloads you need to get from it and then and then being able to incorporate it into your life and i and i can't quite quite place my finger on why 2 weeks feels just like the right amount of like dosage of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's i don't know i i use a similar amount of time for for sacred introspection 3 times mm. a year I do it at the two eclipse, two eclipse windows, and then I do it over the um, December January transition. I call it the Holy Nights, which is an alchemical practice for alchemical practice from Rosicrucian alchemy. Okay. But I want to say the next eclipse window is October twenty fifth through November eighth, and it's over Samhain. Mm. And I like when I realized that, I just I felt this like deep rise in my body. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been called to do ancestral work here. And like, as a white colonizer, like doing ancestral work is like, I think one of the more important things for, for all of us okay. to do. And I feel, <laughs> I feel um, a little sheepish about like leading it. Although I've been connecting, like I'm obsessed with the dead and I've been connecting with the dead since I was a mm-hmm. child. <laughs> so like I, I can step into my own sovereignty there. Um, but I do feel awkward about it because there are so many, um, indigenous elders who teach this practice right but i have my own practices and they do come from other like they come from europe um through anthroposophy through rosicrucian alchemy but i feel like when we're looking at the the myths that we've internalized around um urgency and giving our power away like all these things that capitalism has taught us all the things that capitalism has taken from us it also took from our ancestors say more you know what it when our ancestors decided that they were going to like work really hard and come to this new land and make it like and sacrifice and put like diminish their needs to build a future for their children or whatever the thing was mm-hmm. right and whatever they had to do to assimilate to be accepted to um like for for our white ancestors like they just they dropped their culture and took on the mantle of mm-hmm. whiteness so that they could mm-hmm. fit in, right? And then for groups who didn't pass as white, like there's a whole other assimilation process that I, I can't speak to with authority, 
Um, but I, I honor and acknowledge mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like there is, you know, when I look at the, the eclipse window for the fall, I'm, I'm hearing that there's a, a, a moment for our ancestors to work with us in calling forth our truth, in unlearning the ways that we've sacrificed our needs to be profitable. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, there's a deep ingrained lie that we've been carrying for generations about survival. Yeah. You know, I think there's something big there. Yeah. yeah. And I, I want to name too that for some people that history is really far away. Like it sounds like your ancestors came here mm-hmm. like quite some time ago. Um, but when you were speaking of that, like to me, it's a very tangible picture of my family you know, being, um, being the daughter of immigrants, watching my parents override their culture, watching my dad work sometimes 80, 90 hour weeks to make sure that our needs were being met. Um, right. I think that they, and they also place a lot of value on material wealth. Um, and so there's this way in which they have eaten and digested these ideas around capitalism that I actually don't think is healthy for my lineage. And even though I don't plan on having children, I feel a responsibility to honor and thank my parents for what they did and sacrificed and also choose something different for myself. Um, and, um, I think that there's something to be said around being pattern breakers, um, regardless Mm. of when your ancestors, uh, came to whatever land you are sitting on, um, being a pattern breaker means that you are honoring, uh, the work that, you know, your ancestors had to do to survive and also honoring the place that you're at right now and asking if that, that strategy still works, if that strategy still serves. Um, and I think that that's worth a a deeper inquiry. Um, and it sounds like, you know, the, the eclipses are just the perfect time to be able to do that work. Yeah. It's a, it's such a sacred time for, you know, I like, you know, when I say self-care, I feel like it gets, I don't know what everyone hears when I say self-care, but there's a thing about being caring for the self so that you have energy to give the collective, right? The healing that we must do so that we can show up in the whatever way our core gift shares, like, would, would call for us. And I feel there's a space for self-care in service of the collective that happens during these two-week windows that is, I don't know, it's like otherworldly. Mm. Um, like, for example, with people pleasers. Um, people pleasers wanting to give who care deeply, not sure whether they're motivated by the desire to contribute or, or their need for acceptance, feeling pressure from outside of the self to be a certain sure. way. And kind of those of us who even forgo- forgot how to know what we wanted, yeah. right. And need, need to rebuild that muscle. And the eclipse portal is a perfect time to experience your full self. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. So there's like a softening that can open there. Eclipses can shine a massive ray of truth into mm-hmm. your life. Mm-hmm. And for those of us who've suppressed our truth, you know, and for me, my, I believe that, you know, I'm like seventh generation Californian. <laughs> my, my, my ancestors were Irish building the railroad. So <laughs> there's like, there's complexity there. 
I believe we've been suppressing our truths for a long time and probably even before we came to Turtle Islands. And I believe that allowing in a massive ray of truth into your life, these beautiful nodes twice a year is like, for me, that's precious gold mm. to reveal new nuggets of truth, you know, to, to an, a lineage that's forgotten how to honor its own mm-hmm. truth. Mm-hmm. Did that make it sense? It does. Did it carry? Yeah, okay. yeah. It, it absolutely makes sense. And, and just as a reflective point, it's um, what I'm hearing is that there's, there's this potency in in watching when earth opens up her doors um mm-hmm. and you know i i don't know any traditional lineage that didn't look to the sky for for support right. um right. and so watching as as earth opens up her doors as um an invitation for you to step into you doing the work and so again it's not coming from a place of like oh this is magically going to happen if you just passively sit here um oh right no (laughs) it's an opening and you step and you do the work and here's two weeks of um really centered care that you can take for yourself um in a way that is going to help you step further into your truth in a way that is going to help clarify some things for you and then when you show up to the collective in service it's coming from that clarified essence um, rather than coming from like a muddied sense of like you know wondering is this my service or is this my condition just to be thorough you know the eclipses this year you know this upcoming month and in the fall are both in Scorpio and Taurus so if you have strong ties to either of those um, astrology signs, the eclipse might be heightened mm-hmm. for you. And if you happen to have a birthday in there, it can be even more heightened. Um, and there's a thing about um, Taurus is like super reliable and like steady and I think about like um, sensual pleasure with Taurus, where Scorpio is like this passionate, like, let's get into the scary topics like sex and death and transformation. Mm -hmm. And the combination of those two, I just want to say is like, I see it as a steady foundation that gives us an opening to evolve. Lovely. And I really loved how you just said it, that, you know, yeah, if we just ride through it without intentionality or maybe set an intention but don't actually take the steps to go inward and and listen, mm-hmm. you'll get something out of it. Like life will happen. And when you open, like walk through the portal and connect to yourself and allow yourself deeper in, that's where you are co-creating the magic. It's not just the universe doing things to yes. you, right? That's where you are in your sovereignty calling forth your wisdom. And that's where I see so much magic happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where I believe the deeper insights are going to come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love it too, because it's like, um, if I were to translate that into like Taoist terms, it's when your yin, which is your intentionality is aligned with your yang, which is aligned action. Mm-hmm. Um then you're in co-creation with the universe and here's the universe giving you like the most obvious like hit you over the head symbolism around right. <laughs> yin and yang right. combining um so i i love yeah. that that's how that's how you're interpreting this this moment um yeah, yeah. Mm. So much juiciness, Nahal. Thank you so much for for sharing your wisdom with us today. And um, I will put this up as a podcast. I'll also put it up as um, just something you can watch on my Instagram page. Um, And so if anybody felt aligned with this, please go share with your friends, subscribe to the podcast. And Nahal, please... Uh, let us know how we can find you and what your beautiful offerings that you're wanting to share right now are. Oh, 
Thanks, Beauty. Um, I'm on Instagram at Starry Nahal. And um, in preparation for this eclipse window, this is the first time I'm opening it up to a small group of people who want to take that space and connect with what their core gift is so that they can feel confident knowing what is their work to do and how, how their unique sacred gift makes a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be exactly during the eclipse window. I'm like so excited. This is the first time I've offered it to more people. Um, and I'm going to do a preview event of that on April 27th um, in the evening um, Pacific time. And there's a link in my bio if you want to just get more info about that. Um, it's not open for registration yet, so you can get on the wait list. And um, I want to say April 27th is a really special day. It's the day my dad crossed over to the other side. Mm. Um, and um, and I recently found out, you know, he was adopted at birth. And so I never knew his birth family until last year. Wow. And the eclipse has helped me find them. It's a long story, but it's a powerful <laughs> one. And I have to say his sister, his full blood sister, has that same birthday, April 27th. So wow. I'm saying, I love you, Aunt Melody. And um, it's a special day for me because it honors the ancestors. And um, it'll be a really powerful time. Um, and I'll be talking about how to make the most of the eclipse window um, and why it's such a potent time to discover your soul aligned work for anyone who wants to go a little bit deeper into yeah. it. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing. And um, yeah, please go follow Nahal. Go check out her beautiful offering around the eclipse. And thank you all for joining us for this podcast and Instagram Live. Thank you.